Tonight on The Body Politic, what exactly is MoveOn.org? Using the web to advocate for political change is next on UCSD TV. Hello, I'm Michael Bernstein, and this is The Body Politic. Tonight, we'll look at the growing trend of using the internet to define and then promote political agendas. My guest is Wes Boyd, the founder and president of MoveOn.org, an online network with close to two million participants. Wes, welcome. Thank you, Michael. A computer software engineer who's now a major national political advocate. Uh, how exactly did you come about founding MoveOn.org? Well, basically, my wife and I are accidental activists. We uh, were very frustrated during the time of the, the, the impeachment controversy, and everybody we heard from said, what in the heck is going on in Washington, D.C.? Why is this, this obsession that seems to be going on forever? This concerning the Clinton impeachment? Concerning the Clinton impeachment. And so you and your wife were concerned that this was diverting attention from right we had, we had recently sold a business we were working to start another business in education software and we essentially got waylaid by this issue because we, we just couldn't look away anymore it seemed like we we trust people in washington to do the right thing to to really get at issues that that people in america care about but they seem to go off on these odd tangent tangents sometimes so we basically wrote this petition and because we're technologists, we could do it very simply on the internet. And the petition said, uh, Congress must immediately censure President Clinton and move on to pressing issues facing the nation. Simple thing. We thought very moderate, very centrist. We sent it out to some friends and family. And within just a couple of days, 100,000 people had signed this online petition. So then the, the question was, we knew there was more to do than just deliver these petitions to members of Congress. And so from that point on, we really have been innovating in how to help people be active, how, how to help them participate. And you see the internet playing a central role in that empowerment. Well, it really comes down to this concept of connecting together to, to do something together. Uh, with the internet, it's not uh, like broadcast, where you have all the messages coming from one central source. People can talk to each other on the internet, and they can really many voices. Many voices can come together to be to amplify each other. This require an enormous amount of uh, funding work to to get MoveOn.org going. How exactly did you did you approach that challenge? Well, our original investment in, in MoveOn.org was eighty nine dollars and ninety five cents for a fairly high capacity website that hosting. And what we did is we just put this petition up, and then all of a sudden had all these people, and those people were willing to support our work from that point on. So we really haven't had to invest much ourselves at all in this. It's really about people getting together to do this work. I sense in, in what you've said that you have some anxiety about the role of the formal media in disseminating information and then in evoking responses from the public. I mean, I suppose a devil's advocate could say, what's the problem? The media covers Washington. Uh, the Clinton impeachment, of course, was a, a big issue. and. Uh, how is that not democratic in, in, in your mind? I think people get the sense that there's a lot going on in Washington. There's, there's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of energy um, because there's all these fights going on. And it seems to always be about the fight. Uh, impeachment was a lot about a, a very partisan fight. Um, and, and so you have all these shows and broadcasts that are about people screaming at each other. The, the, the problems with that are not every issue is a fight, fight, fight issue. In fact, the ones we really should be working on are the ones that bring us, brings us to, together, that we can work together on a, as a nation. So the worst thing is that people get pushed away. They, they may watch TV to see the fight because it's kind of compelling. It's like, kind of like watching professional wrestling or something. But it's not something you'd actually want to be part of. So that we found that the closer we get to politics, the more we're finding it's this vacuum but there are really no people there. There are these political consultants and political operatives and people who are on these shows. But in terms of real people being plugged in, in terms of democracy actually working, it's very scary. So, and there's no interactive quality to it. I, I sense that's a concern of yours. When we sit in front of the television 
and receive a news broadcast, of course, there's no, there's no eliciting of a response. Now, I take it a central goal on, in, in your organization is to make people party to a, an ongoing conversation about pressing issues. That's right, and, and it's really as much about listening to where people are so that we can figure out how people can come together and then how, they can, how they, we can run campaigns that make these voices heard. Well, in the wake of the impeachment business and, of course, uh, ultimately with the conclusion of the Clinton presidency, where did the organization go with respect to, to major issues? Did you then have an agenda about specific issues you would pick up or did your participants pose these issues? How did that work? What we did is, after the impeachment, we formed the process we call an action form where we asked people to come in and, and make their comments on what were the important issues facing us. And then we asked other people to come in and rate those issues. So we actually have sort of a democratic process whereby the issues that people are most energized by rise to the top. With that, we, we chose an, the issue of campaign finance reform, which is one that pollsters will tell you doesn't even you know, hit the top 10. But we found that we, when we went to the folks on our list, if they think about it for a couple of minutes, that one really comes to the top because it's, it's systemic. It's something that really impacts every issue. That's very interesting. So there, there seems to be some disjunction between what the lead polling results are on any given matter and what you're discovering through your, through your website. Yeah, the, the opportunity is that because the, the web is as much about uh, conversations as it is about getting information out, that through these conversations, people get a more nuanced view of issues, and they can actually not just react the way a pollster you know, poses a question and you have three seconds to react. You can actually process and then come to better, better conclusions. And roughly now about two million participants right. and growing. Right. Um, do you have a sense of the composition of this population? I mean, what, what segment of American society you're reaching, or, or is there no way to tell? Well, it's difficult to tell. Mostly we know we know which issues people are interested in. But uh, we did do a little bit of demographic research after we did what we called the Move On PAC primary last year. We found that the demographics were very comparable to sort of your average voting demographics. A little bit younger, as you'd sort of expect because it's the internet, and a little bit more educated. But o overall, it's very comparable to the broad American public. You mentioned the Move On PAC uh, primary. Let, let's talk about that. That was a very interesting moment in the history of your organization. How exactly did you set that up, uh, and what exactly were the results of your, of your canvas? What happened is last year, as there's this time that's called in professional circles the money primary, where candidates, where the key candidates for the presidential race are really determined not by the public in any way, but how well they do in fundraising. And most of the fundraising is done through, through big contributor networks and through you know, these dinners where they, they speak and they, they draw a lot of money. So we figured this is bad because you could actually make the, these fundamental decisions could be made before anybody really knows what's happening. Let's bring some populism into it. So we said, we're running a primary. And the funny thing was that all the campaigns went, what, what, a primary? And they all played. They, all, they were, all were part of it. They provided information. They encouraged um, uh, people from their list to, to play, to, to come and, and vote in the primary. And it was very interesting. Uh, what happened in that primary is that Governor Dean did, did the best. Howard Dean. Yes, yes. Howard Dean. Uh, go, uh, Senator Kerry, I think, was third. Uh, Dennis Kucinich was second in that list. And what that really reflected is the people who did first and second at that time were the people who had actually developed lists and constituencies that they had been connecting with already. Right. So, so a new form of grassroots organizing in both the Dean and Kucinich that's correct. campaigns. Now, of course, Senator Kerry has embraced that way of organizing very, very deeply at this point. So, you know, I think campaigns have learned from the experience of the Dean campaign and the experience of move on in terms of bringing that kind of support and, in. And, and, and that primary, uh, that, electronic, uh, that electronic canvas uh, obviously did a great deal to uh, in, in enhance the visibility of your organization and what you're trying to do. Uh, in the same time period, there was also an incident involving moveon.org and your effort to achieve some national advertising at the Super Bowl. Could you tell us a little about that? Yeah, well, uh, it was actually last December that we thought Again, the, the, all this media that you see in politics is produced by professionals. 
uh, their set of consultants in Washington that pretty much do all this work. We, so it's no surprise that we keep seeing the same commercials over and over again in every campaign. Um, same people are doing same it. Same people are doing it. So we thought, well, you know, let's, let's show Washington in some sense that there's a lot of talent out here in America. And we ask people on our list, why don't you produce the 30-second ad that gets at the issues that you care about in this upcoming uh, presidential year? We thought we maybe would get dozens or maybe 100 submissions, and we had more than 1,500 people wow. um, who submitted 30-second ads, and some of them were really very, very good. And we, to, in order to get the best ones out of that, we asked people on our list to rate them. So very quickly, again, the best ads floated to the top, and then we had a professional judging panel, and actually they, they come up, came up with the same answer as to the winner of that contest. Very interesting. And the, that ad we took and... and placed it or tried to place it on the Super Bowl. And it was refused. It was refused. Uh, they first told us it was controversial and, and they didn't want to do it. And then they told us they had a policy against the placement of advocacy ads um, on the network. And in this particular case, the advertisement was taking up a specific issue or was it taking up the organization? Uh, what was the substance of the message? This ad was a beautiful ad. It, it simply showed a bunch of children doing blue-collar jobs, tough blue-collar jobs. And that was it. That was the whole ad. Um, so it focused on a very mainstream issue, the issue of uh, our children, the future, and this, de this, burdens, this, this yes. burden, yes, that's developing. But it was deemed too controversial. This raises the, the broader set of issues with, with which your organization uh, contends. You, you've spoken repeatedly, uh, I believe the phrase you use is the hollowing out of democracy in America. What exactly do you mean by that? My sense is you feel this is crucially linked with the emergence of these large telecommunications companies and media organizations, but why, again, does this hollow out democracy instead of enhancing it, in your view? There are a couple of ways in which democracy is hollow hollowed out. Firstly, aside from the media issue, there's the issue of the professionalization of politics, but that's connected to media. If the, if the only way you reach people is through television, then all of politics becomes about fundraising so that you can put ads on, the, uh, on television. To raise the necessary That's, that's problem. the whole thing. So politicians, from the minute they're elected, in fact, are fundraising for their next election, and many, many hours a day. Not, not to mention the fact that their campaigns don't actually have real people in them. They have political consultants who develop ads to put on television. They don't want to take any risks. They don't include volunteers in their process often because the volunteer might say something stupid, and that's the way you, you get in trouble. So, I mean, that's one way in which democracy has been hollowed out. The, the, the political campaigns have become professionalized. This professional class, if you will, it sort of captures the conversation right. from the people. Right. But, but the, other, the other hollowing out is this, this broadcast media which um, projects just conflict as politics. Politics equals conflict. Um, means that people run away. They don't want to be part of this. Why would I want to be part of this fight? I might want to watch it. It's kind of fun to watch. But why would I actually be part of it? And that means that real people are not engaging in figuring out these issues it faces as a country. And, you know, you know. Well, I think for, what, the past two decades, any, any polling results of uh, college students or high school students about their career aspirations, work aspirations, politics is way down that list. Earlier generations, it would be uh, high up on that list. As, as a worthy enterprise among, among others. And, it's, and it's, what it means is that the talent pool for people who are doing this important work of figuring out how our country moves forward is very thin. It's a very shallow talent pool. And that's, and that's kind of terrifying. So that's why our big, our big goal, aside from anything else, really is participation. The more people we can get to step forward and try being engaged, we find that they, 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 they find that gratifying. And they do more, and they do more, and they'll run for office, and they'll get engaged uh, in politics in Washington, and we'll be living in a better country. 
do you have a professional cadre running the organization? How exactly does the organization work? Do you feel there are risks for your own advocacy group of, of being caught up in these processes that tend to degrade political discussion in other venues? Well, we've been very aware of the dangers. One, one of the things we've done is we don't have a Washington office. <laughs> Two people at one point wanted oh, to share an office in Washington. We said, no way. It's the beginning of the end. So we, you know, we are embedded in America just the way the two million people on our list are embedded in America, all, all around the, the country, some in New York and D.C. and the Bay Area, et cetera. Um, the other thing is that we have a very young group. And part of the reason for that is that everybody who works at Move On is, has technology as part of their skill set. Um, and they integrate that in their own mind so they can do the message work, they can do the strategy, but they also can do the technology. And uh, that's a very unique kind of individual to find. It's hard to find somebody like that. big generational change. Used to, the old saw used to be any political involvement required that someone be versed in the law, mm. uh, lawyers or those who have some experience. And uh, certainly with your organization, this new frontier of technology, uh, telecommunications, information technology, seems to be a new requirement yes. uh, for developing these new networks. It means that they can do the, the organizing online directly rather than having to go through intermediaries. And, and be aware of the, both the capacities and the limitations That's of, right. of the and technology. Innovate. And innovate. Every time we do a campaign, we innovate in some way. That does, in a way, bring us back to the funding question. Your, your organization continues to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, what started as a, a, a novel and small idea between you and your wife uh, has become a, a national and very large organization. This requires funding. How do you see uh, yourself meeting these financial requirements in future? Uh, do you have some major sponsors now? Uh, how do you present that to the public you're trying to reach? We actually have a very small staff and, then, and um, about 10 people. And uh, we found that funding the staff is a very small concern. Uh, what, we, what we work to do is fund campaigns. And people really enjoy that. They, what we do is we say, here's we first discovered this actually back in uh, December of 2002. We said, why don't we do a campaign about Iraq and let's buy a New York Times ad together. And we said, let's, let's try to put together $30,000 to make this ad happen. And in uh, 48 hours, $400,000 came in wow. from the 2 million people on our base. So we found all of a sudden, yes, people really like this idea of getting together to have their voices amplified. So all of our campaigns integrate actually uh, broadcast media advertising as part of the as part of the picture and uh, so our campaigns tend to to cost a few hundred thousand dollars each but the funding comes one by one from the individuals in our in our in our base so primarily a grassroots uh, funding funding strategy right I know there's some people who have uh, raised some questions uh, George Soros is a major supporter of yours uh, is that correct and does that pose any special challenges for the organization Last September, we decided to do a six-month uh, issues campaign where we, and that where we actually went to battleground states and talked about some of these key, key issues that the folks in our base care about. And we decided we were going to have a goal of $10 million in grassroots fundraising to, to make that happen, which has never been done before on that scale. And then to encourage that kind of participation, encourage these $40 donors to come forward, we looked for some big contributors who would provide matching funds. So Mr. Soros and Mr. Lewis said they would provide for every $2 raised from the grassroots, $1 in matching funds. In matching funds. And we see this as kind of a race to, to get as much participation in as possible, as soon as possible, because we really uh, are in a race to, to fix the system in many ways. Uh, I take it uh, from these remarks that you think uh, genuine campaign finance reform at the moment is is not a reality, is sort of the will of the wisp uh, with respect to the major political parties well, actually, and their leaders. Having been in the middle of the dynamics of what's happening with the political parties and, and, uh, and politics in general, uh, and having promoted campaign finance reform, we, our, our, our group really advocated for McCain-Feingold, which is a campaign finance reform bill. Um, we've actually seen the impact of that bill, and it has been a very deep impact. The bill essentially said that candidates or parties couldn't go out and raise hundreds of thousands of dollars directly. So you don't see, you don't have these rubber chicken dinners anymore <laughs> where the candidate goes out and, and hits, hits up these very, very rich people for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's a very good thing because that's direct, you know, you call that 
access for money. Right. That's a, a direct access for money game. Now, issue we're an issue advocacy organization. We have very, you know, access. The people who give us money to get issues on the air, they have access to us, but who cares? I mean, it's, we're not elected officials. So there is a distinction. Um, and uh, we are strong promoters for the ability of issue advocacy groups to do these kinds of ads because uh, what else is democracy but getting these voices out there? Well, in a way then, your organization, at least in some of its practices, not to mention its technological virtuosity, becomes a template for future candidates who would seek to raise money in these grassroots ways that are consistent with the McCain-Feingold limitations and so forth and, and avoid the rubber chicken yeah. dinner circuit. Oh God, if I, you know, if I was running for office, the idea that I wouldn't have to spend four or five hours on the telephone every night uh, asking rich people for, for some money so that I could run again you know, for the house or whatever office it is would be, I'd, I'd be desperate for it. These people are basically doing two jobs. They're doing their fundraising job, and then they're trying to do the job of, of helping govern the country. And they're not actually working well together. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good system. If we can kind of reduce that amount of time they spend fundraising to a couple hours a day, I think it would make a big difference. And decentralize it into a genuine grassroots uh, uh, effort. The fact that they could expect tens of thousands of constituents to support them when they ask for support if they maintain a conversation with those constituents over time. That means that the moment they run for dog catcher for the very first time, they start to build this list of, of, of supporters. And it's, these are people they can reach, not like direct mail, where it costs almost as much to send the letters as they get back, but almost for free. What issues do you see moveon.org focusing on highlighting, making part of the national conversation uh, in the months? and? years ahead, obviously the presidential election is beckoning, but um, b above and beyond the presidential election, are there a set of issues that you will target on in the near future? People have a, a lot of difficulty focusing on individual issues right now with the presidential election so, so close. That's dominating. It's dominating people's minds. Uh, so it's, it's actually difficult for us to even ask the question because people will say, all that matters is the presidential election. Let's not talk about that. But the issues that come up again and again are, are some of these structural issues like campaign finance reform. Um, the issue of the deficit was a surprise. You know, most people, people consider us on the progressive side of things. Most people would not look to progressive politics to find critiques on the, on the deficit. But as it turns out, I think we're a very centrist country, and people really do care about spending our children's future. You know, that's, that is a, a core American value, is that we build a, a, a country that's better for our children. And that's, and that's one that's going to be uh, very important. Another one that keeps coming up again and again, which is, I think, very sophisticated, but people, people really care about, is the, is the media. Last year, we ran this campaign on FE, FCC media consolidation, and surprisingly, hundreds of thousands of people stepped forward. They got how important that issue was. So I'm sure that the, the role of the media uh, is going to be a, an issue set people are going and, to and, and it would appear that uh, advocates on both sides of the media consolidation issue have started to use the very techniques that, that moveon.org has pioneered to garner support for their particular points of view, especially those who are concerned about media agglomeration. They seem to be traveling the internet widely these days to uh, drum up support for uh, some effort to limit the size of these companies. But, you know, the, me the issue of media consolidation is not a, a left issue or a right issue. It, it goes across the political spectrum. It seems to have a real it, It's, Ameri it's American, an American issue. We need a democracy, and to have that, we have to have uh, diverse institutions. Uh, a little closer to home, uh, I I'm curious about uh, the role of the organization as best you could as best you could discern it during the gubernatorial recall campaign. MoveOn.org had some uh, some role to play there in allowing people to express themselves on an issue that sort of, uh, you know, emerged very quickly for Californians, raised a lot of questions about the electoral processes in California. Did you learn any lessons from that or any insights about the, the California electorate? Well, we found ourselves in a, in a difficult position because that was a, a position where we found ourselves uh, defending the status quo in some sense um, uh, and at a time when obviously people want change. Um, so I think that is a good 
a good prospect from, from the standpoint of what's going to happen this year, but from uh, you know what happened last year, what we did is we, we learned better how to mobilize people in the field and we, and we innov innovated in a number of ways. But it was a difficult election to be a part of, especially because the, the rules of the game were so strange. I mean, essentially, you didn't know who the candidates were until days before the election. Well, there were so many of them. Yeah. Well, you didn't know who the, the, the you know, who was going to be actually the person running against Gray Davis. That's right. That's right. Uh, unprecedented. Where would you like to see the organization five years from now, ten years from now? Well, we really have a vision that we and that we're actively promoting that every advocacy organization uses the sort of techniques that we've used and that every leader, every political leader, uses these techniques. So we're out there evangelizing this way of doing business, really. And so I think the big vision is that we live in a, 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 you know, a diverse democracy where uh, there are groups out there that are connected to real constituencies that they can bring forward to, to lend support to important initiatives. And that, that we as a society get to a place where it's not all about the political partisan fight, but that we actually get leaders who step forward to address the issues we face, because it's, it's sort of terrifying that we don't have a system that allows that at this point. We know that there are things, for example, we have this Iraq thing that has become an absolute obsession for this country. We believe, the people on our list believe, it was a big mistake to get into that, into that mess. The terrifying thing is all the things we're not doing because we're focused on it. Because we're so distracted and it's, focused on it. You know, coming from business and you do business strategy, you try to be strategic about what's important and what's not. And we don't see our country being strategic. We hope that connecting people into this process will make a difference. Thank you, Wes. My guest has been Wes Boyd of MoveOn.org. Thank you all for joining us on The Body Politic. I'm Michael Bernstein. Good night.